Well, I was going to take it down to the shop, but Clutch is not having it. I've lost all Clutch now. So, we're going to go ahead and pull the master out, take it down to the shop, get it ready to rebuild. And then I've got a new rubber hose on the way for down below. Also, the fuel line needs to be tightened because it's leaking. So, some projects just never end. Alrighty, down in the shop here. Got the clutch system out of the scout and I brought it on down. So we're going to dive into this. I know the master cylinder looks really nice, but I never actually rebuilt it. When I got the scout, I just cleaned it up nice and I painted the cap. That says use IH brake fluid, by the way. So, you know, can't do that like I was going to follow the rules anyways. And then we've got the slave cylinder. This is a brand new slave cylinder, or it was a brand new slave cylinder two years ago. And so we're going to look in that and make sure it's not all gunked up. And then this old rubber line, I'm going to go ahead and replace that. I've got a rebuild kit for the master, and I've got a new line on the way. So when those get here, I'll slap all this together, put it back in the scout. Hopefully we can get the clutch bled, and it'll be nice. Um, this whole time it was never nice. I tried to bleed it a couple times, and it just never... It never seemed to work very good, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. Master cylinder apart here. Uh, all it is is just this little piston assembly shoved in the back. This one does not have a snap ring in it, but I think it's supposed to have a snap ring in it, so that's something to add, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see down in the bottom, that's awful spongy. This has two seals on it it's got one down here and then one under this plastic piece right under there either of those feel really stiff or like they they'd cause any issues but i already ordered the rebuild kit so we'll go ahead and put fresh seals in this and hopefully it'll work better next we're going to take the slave cylinder part and see what's going on in there just got the little rubber boot pulled off the slave cylinder and, well, I can already see the issue. That thing's pretty munched up, if not the issue, a issue. So that'll need to be addressed here. Just flung that snap ring across the shop, but fortunately I was able to find it. Gonna put a little compressed air in there and shove that piston out. Just got the slave cylinder apart here. You can see it's just this little piston in there. There's a rubber seal on the back of it. And then the spring goes in there. This one was a little hard to get out because of the ridge in this cylinder. So I put some compressed air behind it and shot that little piston across the shop. But fortunately I was able to find it. You can see that ridge in there. I'm not sure what's up with that, but that's right at the end of the stroke of the slave cylinder, but I think it's causing an issue, or was for me there, where it was getting the piston stuck way out there and then not wanting to retract. So I'm going to go ahead and run a hone through this. The seal still looks good. It wasn't, I don't think it ran through that uh, garbage there, so I'm going to put all that back together here after I run a hone through it. And then once my rebuild kit shows up for this and the rubber hose shows up, I'll get all this back together and throw it in the scout. All right, we're back here with the scout clutch. Um, just one thing I wanted to mention that I was thinking about here. Uh, this is the early style scout girling clutch. This was used on the Scout 80s and the, some of the Scout 800s before they went to a mechanical clutch. It's a hydraulic clutch, obviously. And, of course, the slave cylinder push rod here, which was on my Scout when I got it, is a bolt that's flattened with a hole drilled in it. Yeah, I know. It works for now, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, just got the mail today. Got this new uh, hose to go on the slave cylinder so I can put that back in the scout. My rebuild kit for this shows up tomorrow so I can do that. And one more little treat for me. You just gotta love it when the new old stock parts are cheaper than the brand new parts. Paid like 15 bucks for this cap. They're like 35 bucks online from like Napa or O'Reilly's so that's pretty mint. 
Going to put that one on the shelf. I have another cap that's on the scout, obviously, because it was running and driving. But I accidentally wrecked one of my distributor caps when I was taking the engine out, so I wanted to have a spare round. So yeah, I'm going to put that hose on the slave cylinder. We're going to go put the slave cylinder on the scout. And then tomorrow, hopefully, the rebuild for the master cylinder will show up, and we can go put that on the scout as well. And we'll be running and driving again. Got that hose on the slave cylinder, and I just wanted to mention that in case anybody's looking for a slave cylinder for the early scouts and is seeing the kind of horrendous prices that these are going for, this particular one that I'm using is for a forklift. It replaces a Crown 074815, and it's the slave cylinder for the brakes, I believe. So if you Google around or look it up, you can actually get them a little bit cheaper. It's not a huge price difference. I probably save like 20 bucks at the end of the day, but you know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So yeah, I'm going to go throw this guy in the scout and then hopefully tomorrow afternoon I'll get this guy rebuilt and theoretically we'll be driving again. Alrighty, well, just crawled under here to put the clutch slave cylinder in. It goes right there. And uh, I was kind of curious about the bolt that holds the clutch fork in. So I did the natural thing and took that out, which now I can't get that back in, but that's fine. That can stay out because I have another issue. Yep, broke the clutch fork right at the pivot point. It's not an unheard of issue with these things. I guess I just delivered too many torques on the pedal and, well, she went snap. I figured that's what that funny noise I heard was when I was pumping up the clutch. So it would look like we're pulling a transmission now. Fortunately, one of my favorite things is these have tiny little transmissions and transfer cases. So... I guess y'all get to look forward to that uh, later in this video. Just threw down these junk tires so I'd have something other than things that don't belong to me to run into when I bring the scout down here. Just went ahead and started it in gear. Got it in four low so it goes nice and slow. Like if you look close there, you can see that front drive shaft flopping around. Well, things kind of escalated. Been meaning to do that. You can see this lower door hinge does not sit flush. They're supposed to sit flat against the door face. And this one, of course, broke at some point somebody welded it back together and now it won't sit flush and it was bending the edge of the door where it mounts and i really didn't want that tearing for anybody that might be wanting to take one of these apart these impact drivers or attack drivers are the greatest thing you put it in there and you hit the end with a hammer and it pushes in and drives the screw out at the same time they're like the greatest thing ever. So yeah, I'm gonna look at my other scout, see if I have a door hinge, and then seat, trans tunnel cover, all that nonsense has to come out. There's a skid plate underneath that needs to come out, and then I hopefully I have the trans out. We'll figure out why it broke the clutch fork and replace the clutch fork, so always exciting. Alrighty, four bolts, hold the seat in, pop that guy out. I'm going to take these seat rails off just so that wire's out of my way and I'm not impaling my knee on the bolt threads or breaking this little guy off. And then I'm going to take the shifter boots off and then all the bolts around the trans cover. And then I'll probably put the scout up on jack stand so I can crawl underneath it and take the skid plates off. We're getting there. Pull the drive shaft off. Cover's off, obviously. The scout's actually airborne now, put it up on jack stands, and um, we're just not going to worry about that. Might try and tighten that yoke up. 
before we uh, send it too much. Another neat thing, this transfer case says brown lipy gearbox on it. It's not really a rare or anything, but I think that's pretty darn neat. Alrighty, went ahead, got the e-brake cable, all that nonsense off of there, so I'm ready to pull this cross member. I'm going to go ahead and pull the transfer case separate, since once the drive shafts are off, that's just as easy to do. I don't mind if some gear oil comes out or whatever. Obviously throw a catch pan underneath. Got my scissor jack under the engine, because once this cross member's out, there's no mounts on the back of the engine to hold it up. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and pull all these little bolts out of the transfer case. I'll probably have a jack under it before I undo the like last three, obviously. And then we'll get the transfer case out of here. So yeah, we'll see when we get there. Alright, you got the back cover off the transfer case. You have to pull the transmission output gear to get the transfer case off. So you just undo that cotter pin and undo that bolt and pull that gear out. But uh, kind of noticed something. I, th I think there's supposed to be gear oil in there. She's uh, not too dirty in there though. So I guess that's good. I guess we'll put some gear oil in when we put it back together and hope it all kind of maybe stays in. I'm sure it's got nothing to do with this absolutely boned output. All right, there she is. Got the trains right here. About to take it out, set it on the ground here next to the transfer case. And I managed to fundangle the clutch fork out of there. You can see it's a greasy guy, but clean brake right there. Oh, the camera's not going to focus, but it's not even really all that worn down. Might see if I can't find somebody to weld cast iron and put that back together. We'll see about that one, but throw out bearings pretty munched. Got a lot of play in it. So guess we'll see what we can't do about finding new ones of those and then uh figure out if the if the clutch pressure plate's moving or not. So yeah, we'll see. I'll have to take the uh bow housing out of there here. But yeah, pretty happy with that. Glad I didn't have to pull that cross member, just pulled the trans mounts and uh, everything slid right out. So that works pretty good. Alrighty, the trans out. If we stick our nose into the uh, bell housing, you can see that fork and that fork have these big pads on them. And this one does not. This one also moves and these two, not really. I mean, they you can see just the littlest bit of play in that one, but nothing like that. So, that's probably our issue. So I gotta dig through my parts pile, see if I have another pressure plate, and maybe another clutch disc, I don't know. You can see where something was touching that. I'm pretty sure it was the uh, release fork when I was pulling that out, not too sure. I know that clutch is in the right way, though. So. Alrighty. So yeah, I might switch over to the other bell housing because the misalignment between the slave cylinder and the clutch fork causes that side wear in the wall of the uh, slave cylinder and the cylinder itself because the little push rod's pushing sideways on the piston in there. So we might do the other bell housing. I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to get this one off since that pressure plate needs to be changed for sure. Ready back at it again. Got the transmission and transfer case sitting here on the floor. I was gonna swap out and put my other transfer case and transmission combo in this while I resealed that transfer case because the output is super sloppy. But that transfer case has the output on the lower part of the transfer case in line with the front output. And both of the other transfer cases have the output down, or front output down below and the rear output up above. And I'm not too sure if I can use that, so I'm gonna stick with this one because I know it works. I'll tighten up the output and I'll put gear oil in it. Hopefully it holds it. If not, I'll reseal that, put new seals in the outputs later on. But 
we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, we're going to put that back in with oil in it. Pray it all stays in there. Oh yeah, and we're going to take the top off this transmission and see if I can't get the output shaft to go back in because I kind of messed that up when I took it apart. So yeah, we're going to pop the top off this thing, see how it looks inside. It shifted great when the Scout was running, so I'm not going to really worry about it. So yeah. Alrighty, tops off the transmission. You can see same exact situation as the transfer case. My light just died. I just charged that. Um, this has like no gear oil in it, but it looks really nice like it hasn't been empty for long. So that's kind of weird. Same thing, gonna fill it up, gonna run it. I'll reseal it later, probably when I actually put a clutch in this thing. So yeah, I pulled the output shaft out too far when I took the transfer case off and got to put all that back together. And then Alrighty, the up sky just came. Got a bunch of mail, some brake shoes for the front of this thing. Put those there. This here is the new throw out bearing. So we're gonna go ahead and get that installed. Uh, I haven't done any updates in the past couple days, but I pulled in my spare transmission and transfer case. They're wrong. That's my old transmission. I had to go completely through the old transmission because the needle bearings in the input shaft actually managed to fall under the lower main shaft somehow and I couldn't get them out with a magnet I've tried like tilting the transmission whatever anyways tore this thing all the way down and then had to completely reassemble it so we're back again and the other thing that happened of course when I really uh, took it apart rather is that the input shaft bearing is broken on the outer race there we go it's got that nice break on it so that's junk so i took this one apart i was like i'll just use this input shaft because my old one has a crack in one of the gears or one of the gears has a little chip out of it is what i should say so i pulled this input shaft out went to put it in this one and the gear here on the other transmission goes the other direction i don't know why and just to add to the pain the cage on the bearing fell apart and now the balls inside of it are just kind of everywhere so that's two bum bearings so i pulled in transmission number three which has the long input shaft i'm pretty sure it's out of a jeep transmission an inline six jeep transmission i think had the big long input shaft and that one had a good bearing on it so i pulled that bearing off and put it on this transmission because everybody that had one in stock they want like 50 bucks for it and i'm not paying 50 bucks for this because this transmission isn't a fresh rebuild at all so when i fresh rebuild this thing i'll spend a hundred bucks on a hold rebuild kit that has bearings and whatnot in it so yeah anyways we'll cross that bridge when we get there so i uh, just started putting the bell housing on just got the throw out bearing gonna put all that on and uh yeah there's the other input shaft so if you look at this input shaft it goes that way and if you look at that one, it goes the other direction. I don't, I don't even know, so don't ask me what the differences all are, but... Well, it's highly confusing to me, so I'll just say that. Anyways, I'm gonna get the throwout bearing set up. Gonna get it, oh yeah, and this transmission just peaked gear oil everywhere, because that's really cool. It didn't even do it while when I was working on it. I like had it all pulled apart and then I left it overnight. I came back and then it just oozed gear oil. So that's really cool. Anyways, gonna put the throw out bearing on and then get the my phone just shut off for whatever reason. Gonna get the bell housing all bolted on with the throw out bearing and everything. And then get the transmission in and then just do everything I did in reverse. It's pretty simple. All the bolts go back where they came from. So yeah, I'm gonna get to it, and then yeah, I gotta do the whole 
clutch hydraulic system as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get to it. One of these days I'll find the angle grinder and then I can fix that door hinge and then that door can get put back on. But you know, that's a story for another day. Another day being tomorrow. So, you know, away she goes. Alrighty. Got the new throw out bearing in last night and got the whole clutch system back together so that well I'm probably shaking the camera too much but the clutch moves and it does work and everything so that's all good clutch works ready to put the transmission in in case anybody was curious why that input shaft for my spare transmission was in here last night that's why I used it as a as a uh, clutch alignment tool because I'm too poor to buy well I'm too cheap to buy one of those I'm not too poor but yeah alrighty that little SOB is all bolted up I only got it figured out I had to pick the engine up with a bottle jack a little more than it was to get the to get the snout of the transmission in the pilot bearing but once it was in it was good got her bolted down mounts are done and uh we're just not gonna look at that mount for now one of these days i'll buy it nice mounts like the engine has and so yeah next we're up to the transfer case obviously bolts right on there then my front drive shaft rear drive shaft whole thing like i said before so here we go Got the scout back in the shop again. Back in the shop, you say? Well, why was it out of the shop? Well, had some friends over yesterday, and and when you got the good company, you get the uh, the fine scout out and take them for a ride around. So go ahead and enjoy these videos of the scout romping around the yard, and I'll give you a quick update in a second. So after we finished romping around in the scout, I went ahead and parked it right out in front of the shop. And now we're going to go ahead and fix that because it still doesn't have a door. I already went ahead and dug in on the hinge here with an angle grinder. So all I got to do now is get in there with the old hot snot machine, throw some weld on that, and hopefully the door will close all the way happily. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get that welded up here this week. And then I'll have to put my door back on, the window frame, and everything that I took out previously. I also got a, uh, a care package I sent myself. Fuel filter for the Scout that goes in the glass bowl in the fuel pump. So that'll be pretty neat to actually have a fuel filter in this thing. And see, I went ahead and threw the... You can't see because my light's not under there. Got the front drive shaft in there. That's why I was able to go over the hill in this thing and actually be able to make it back. So I was rather impressed with how well it does with uh, four-wheel drive. But, you know, four-wheel drive is kind of a, a wondrous thing. So, yeah, anywho, we're going to go ahead and plan on getting the door back on here. Well, there she is. I don't claim to be any pro welder, but I think that'll hold for now. We can go ahead and put the door back on. Doesn't seem like it... Oh, got my light in the way. Doesn't seem like it uh, warped the hinge back out too much, so that's good. If it did, I'd have to uh, whammy the hinge back straight, so... And that would just be a kind of a mess. Couldn't help myself. Grabbed the angle grinder and shaved a little more off the back side here, so... Now it's perfectly flush. 
there was a bit of a bubble right there that was hitting the back and stopping it, so that's even better now. Just like that, it's on. All I had to do, of course, is hold it up top and pound the top door hinge in and then put the three screws in the bottom. You can see on the door, not sure if I ever actually really showed it, but right there above the hinge, that kind of rust line is where the door has started to crack from that stress from the hinge. So now, when we close it, the door hinge doesn't fight us at all or bend the door at all. Unfortunately, it still doesn't want to close onto the second latch here. You can see this door mechanism is very simple. Just two notches and then that little guy. Sorry if my flashlight holding skills aren't uh, the greatest. But we can see what might have caused the uh, issue with the door. You can see here this body line where it's all worn down. It's kind of rolled over. And if we go to the other side and look, you can see how straight this side is. And that door striker plate is right there. On the other side, that door striker plate is moved back. And this one's actually spaced out with a couple washers because, well, this thing's been hit by a few things a number of times. So back to this one, we either need to grind on the front side so it can move out, or we need to grind on the back side so at least the door latches on it. But either way, we're going to have to take this little plate off, I do believe. And we'll have to kind of monkey with some stuff and see if we can't dial it in so the door closes all the way. I know it's a really minor thing, but it kind of kills me. When it closes like that, and then you have that nice gap in there, so... Something I'm going to have to work on here, but we'll get her done. Alrighty, with just a little bit of care. There she is, closed all the way. It's still not, I mean, perfect, because obviously that's still messed up, but... Well, way she goes, it's not too bad. It is very nice to see that door close all the way now. I wound up just having to take the angle grinder and just kiss the back of this a little bit to make it a little bit better for the angle grind or for the angle grinder duh, for the door to close. So yeah, that seemed to work out pretty mint. Door closes good now, and I mean I didn't have to take just but a little bit off the back side of that thing to make it work. And now the door closes good and tight. I know it's good against the seal there. It's like I said, not perfect still. But it's a lot better than it was. Next thing we got to do is go ahead and put the window track on and the single pane of glass that I have. And then one of these days I'll take one of the panes of glass from that door and have another pane of glass remade. And then boom, I'll have all four pieces of door glass. But that's a long ways down the road yet. All right, there's the window system for the driver's side, at least what I have right now. I don't have that rear pane of glass obviously but I'll put it back together like that for now and one of these days I'll get the other the other pane of glass made so it can match the passenger side so we're gonna go ahead and put this guy in should slide right in if I can do this one-handed There we go. I'm going to go ahead and push that down a little bit. And then I got to turn the camera off because I need to hold that pane of glass in while I push this down the rest of the way. And then we'll catch back up. I got to throw the bolts in then. That's all it takes for this pane of glass. It's two bolts on the front and the rear. And that's all that holds the window in. So, yeah. You know, I always feel good when I pick up my ratchet. And it's already set to go in because that means the last thing I did was put something together. Because usually I take things apart and they're too, 
too broken to put back together. Alrighty, time for some uh, preventative maintenance. Picked up these old Luberfiner fuel filters. Just those little guys. They go in the glass fuel bowl, sediment bowl. And uh, never mind that on the side of the engine block. When that was on its side laying on the floor in the shop here, I actually wrote the piston order of a 6.9 IDI on there so I had somewhere to put it because I couldn't find a notepad. So now that's just on the side of this engine block. But anyways, got the fuel filter, gonna throw those in there. And uh, you know, it's preventative maintenance because it prevents a whole lot of headaches when all that sediment goes into your carburetor and then your engine doesn't run for crap. So I'm gonna call it preventative maintenance. I don't even know what in the world this thing is. It's some kind of, there goes the spring. This is some kind of janky little fuel filter. I never really trusted it. It's like a porous soapstone, no, well, it couldn't be soapstone. Um, pumice, that's the word. Something like that, that the fuel can run through. Anyways, I never really trusted it, but I held on to it because I don't throw anything away. All right, I got the fuel filter off, or the sediment bowl off. I already shoved the fuel filter in there. And after some uh, film review, I found the spring that I dropped in the last segment. Now I just have to get the spring to stand upright. I'm not entirely sure if this actually still needs the spring. I'm just dropping things tonight apparently, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure if the spring is needed, but I'm gonna put it in there cause it really can't hurt anything. And the nice thing about these sediment bowl filters, they come with new gaskets. So I can just match one up with mine and then I just have to crawl under there and put it back on. Yeah, that, that was even the wrench I needed that I dropped, not even the extra one, so that's that's lovely. All right, from underneath you can see the uh, fuel inlets on the outside where that brand new rubber hose is, and then where it goes up to the engine is right there. So just move this little guy out of the side, put that glass bowl on there, and then tighten that nut right there. I do it on film, but I gotta move out to the side or else I'm gonna dump all the gas on myself, which wouldn't be very lovely. Well, it's boot time. I moved this thing out of here. Figured I got quite a bit done for this week's video, what with the whole transmission nonsense. I'm gonna stick that there so I don't move it around too much, give you guys epileptic seizures and whatnot. But anywho, like I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I figure since the whole transmission nonsense, it's a pretty, uh, pretty busy video. So I'm going to go ahead and start this thing and we're going to let it warm up. I got to move the other truck and we'll get this thing out of here. So, all right, let's see if this thing will start. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the transfer case in neutral. So it double safety net. Figure out which one of those knobs is the choke. I pull it out and push it back in because the cable's all messed up, so I gotta turn the choke off under the hood. Probably give it a couple pumps of gas. That'll probably. Let's see. Not too shabby. Let's see. Not gonna lie, this is pretty hard with uh, one hand.
me see if I can't prop the camera up here so I can, uh, goodness you guys are not gonna believe this so it was just running had it idling and then the horn just started going off and I just instinctually turned the key off obviously the horn keeps going because the battery's still connected so I unhooked the horn and uh, yeah nothing's on keys not on I didn't touch the steering wheel but uh, I got no idea what's going on there so we'll just leave that disconnected for now I don't know I hit the horn button a couple times and it like shut off for a moment, but I have no idea. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this thing though. Oh. I gotta get both hands in there real quick. All righty, gonna try and drive her out of here. Well, you can't hardly see it, but Scout's back in its parking spot next to the yellow truck here. Uh, it's a real shame the clutch isn't really fully disengaging at all. I'm sure you can hear it, and uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and either get a longer push rod on the master cylinder or a longer push rod for the slave cylinder because I've adjusted it all I really can, and it's just not, it's not really working, so... Kind of a shame, it's still an issue, but it is still really nice to drive it, and it's nice to have drivability issues instead of running issues, so one step at a time, I suppose. Alrighty, it's currently rather late at night here, it's very dark, 
And uh, to just add to the saga here, <clears throat> if we recall back to when I first had the slave and master cylinder on the bench in the shop, I said, yeah, this master cylinder doesn't have a snap ring in it. I don't know if that's really important or not. Well, it is important, and let me show you why. We're currently looking at the Red Scout. You can see I've got the master cylinder pulled out here. And you can see the clutch push rod here coming off the pedal, which is held captive in there by the snap ring and a washer. That's not going to focus, but I think you get the idea. That snap ring was needed, so I'm going to pull that stuff off of this master cylinder and we're going to go put it on the other scout and hopefully the clutch rod won't fall out because of course without that snap ring holding the clutch rod captive the clutch rod can fall out when the pedal's all the way out yeah my pedal does need adjusted but also that will help avoid that in the future so the part scout is giving up parts Alrighty, back to my workbench that is the floor of the blue scout. We have the push rod here out of this scout, and we have the one out of the red scout. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is here. I'm going to kind of compare and contrast, and then I'm going to close my eyes and pick one. What should you do if you're in this situation? Beats the hell out of me. I'll tell you what I choose, and I'll tell you if it works uh, when I get there. Um, you can see this one. Of course, out of the Red Scout is longer than the one out of the Blue Scout, so that's weird. Also, side note, there's that snap ring. It's not in a snowbank, so at least that's one successful thing so far on this adventure. So, and of course, up under there, you can see the end of the Clutch Master Cylinder, where it doesn't have that snap ring. Hopefully, I'm able to get that guy placed in there without losing it. So, yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. All right, after some finagling, I got the one with the yoke from the Red Scout in there. What I'm pretty sure happened to this one is that it's supposed to be straight. And somehow it got bent. So kind of solves a few issues at once. I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that one. If I have to in the future, I'll try and straighten it. If not, they make new ones. I could buy a new one. So... Yeah, we'll see how that works. It should be a lot better. The clutch should actually, like, work now, hopefully, in theory. Uh, yeah, we'll see.